okay good morning my dear students in the last lesson we have learned about the male reproductive system i hope you all have understood the concepts of the male reproductive system the parts of the male reproductive system and their functions now today we are going to deal with the female reproductive system listen up carefully you know the female reproductive system includes a pair of ovaries a pair of oviducts a muscular uterus cervix vagina and external genitalia see here you can see a pair of ov a pair of ovaries on both sides okay and this whole structure is present inside the pelvic cavity here this is the pelvis the pelvic cavity and above this is the abdominal cavity you know that and here it is the pelvic cavity and it is protected by the pelvis the pelvic bones and inside the female reproductive system is placed inside and you know that there is a pair of ovaries a pair of ovary ducts okay a muscular uterus uterus it is highly muscular and the lower part of the uterus it is narrow this portion this is narrow and it is called the cervix and then there is a tubular part that starts from the mouth of the cervix and it is called the vagina and the external genitalia okay the external uh, parts of the female reproductive system so these are the list of the structures that are present in the female reproductive system okay now we can see what are ovaries you know when you consider the female reproductive system when you look into the various parts of the female reproductive system you can see uh, here a pair of ovaries okay these ovaries are placed in the uh, pelvic cavity uh, by using certain they are suspended there by certain ligaments you can see the ligaments here okay so the ovaries are the primary reproductive organs in human female we have learned that the testes are the primary reproductive organs in a human male okay in males the testes are the primary reproductive organs here in human female the ovaries are the primary reproductive organs you know what are primary reproductive organs primary reproductive organs are the organs that produce the gametes okay so in male the testes produce the sperms and here in female the ovaries produce the ova okay so the ovaries are the primary reproductive organs in human female they produce ova by meiosis so you know that the gametes are produced by the process of cell division that is called meiosis okay in order to uh, get the chromosome number reduced into half that's why meiosis takes place there you know about that and these ovaries also secrete the sex hormones okay you have already learned that the testes produce sperms and also it produces androgen the male sex hormones here the ovaries are a pair of organs that produce the ova and also it secrete the female sex hormones okay the function of ovaries is to produce ova and also to produce female sex hormones so let's go something detail about the ovaries now okay listen up something about its location the ovaries are located one on either side of the abdomen connected to the pelvic wall and uterus by ligaments this some here the ovaries are located one on either side here there is one and here there is one okay and these are present in the abdomen in the lower part of the abdomen okay uh, supported by the pelvic bones supported by the pelvic bones and and they are suspended there in the pelvic wall and the uterus uterus ilum pelvic wall ilum it is suspended by connected by certain ligaments okay so it has connection to the pelvic wall and also to the uterine wall, uterus okay the wall of the uterus so location one on either side 
Now, size. This armor is about 2 to 4 centimeters in length. And the length of the Noki Anangal, Evandre Randa Okay, so overall, Abdomen lower abdomen light, pelvis pelvis light, okay. Uh single my uterus in it and a single might Uladana are the ligaments wonder pelvic volume uterine volume attached to two to four centimeters in length. And let's go to the structure now. This is a section, okay, a section of the ovary. It is shown here. So you can see the Various parts of the ovary here. Each ovary has an outer layer of thin epithelium and an ovarian mass called stroma. So here, there is an outer layer of epithelium. Each ovary has an outer layer of epithelium and an inner mass, and this is called the stroma. Okay, so the ovary has an outer layer of epithelium, it's a protective layer, outer covering, and there is a uh, ovarian mass, the mass of the ovary, the whole mass, it is called what is called stroma. Okay, this is a stroma. There are cellular structures inside. You got it? So there is an epithelial layer and there is stroma inside. The stroma has an outer peripheral cortex. This part of the stroma is called cortex and in this area it is called medulla. You have already learned about cortex and medulla in kidney, the structure of kidney. Do you remember that? In kidney, when you take a section of the kidney, you can see that there is an outer cortex and an inner medulla. Also in brain, you can see that there is an outer, in the, in the uh, cerebrum of the brain, there is an outer cortex and an inner medulla. Do you remember that? Like that, in the ovary, there is an outer cortex and an inner medulla. Okay, so first, there is an epithelial layer, then the mass inside it is called the stroma. The stroma has an outer cortex and an inner medulla. You got it? Now, next one is oviduct. So here, you can see that there is a pair of tubular structures. These are called the oviducts. See here, it is very clear. Okay, there is a tube here and there is another tube here. And these are the oviducts. Okay, so oviducts, these oviducts, they extend from the periphery of each ovary to the uterus. They extend from the periphery of each ovary to the uterus. From the periphery of each ovary to the uterus. Okay, these oviducts, tubular structures, they extend from the periphery of the ovary to the uterus. From both sides, it reaches the uterus. See here, it starts from the periphery of the ovary and extends up to the uterus. So a pair of tubes. Got it? So the oviducts are a pair of tubes that extend from the periphery of each ovary to the uterus. It has three parts. The oviduct has three parts. Number one, it is infundibulum or ovidical funnel. So this portion, you see, the portion of the oviduct that is near to the ovary, it is somewhat funnel shape. It is a funnel shaped structure and it is called oviducal funnel or infundibulum. Okay, this is a funnel shaped structure, wider part near the ovary. It is wider and it is near to the ovary. And this infundibulum has certain finger like structures. Can you see that? These finger like structures and these structures are called fimbriae. The finger shaped structures are the rim of the infundibulum and these are called fimbriae. So the oviduct has a wider funnel shaped part that is near to the ovary and it is called infundibulum or oviducal funnel and the rim of the infundibulum or oviducal funnel has certain finger like projections and those are called fimbriae. What is the function of this fimbriae? When the ovary releases an ovum, okay, this fimbriae collects it. Okay, after ovulation, the ovum will be collected by the fimbriae and they will be uh, directed towards the inner part of the oviduct, towards the inside of the oviduct. Okay, now the uh, there are three parts 
number first one is infundibula and you know it is a wider financial palm and it has finger like projection called fimbri now the next one is ampulla okay this portion the middle portion is the ampulla the infundibulum leads to the ampulla okay it is a middle part of the oviduct so after the infundibulum the middle part of the oviduct it is called ampulla and then comes the later part the next part it is isthmus it is a part that is uh, the narrow it, this is wider and this is narrower as it goes is becomes narrower the narrower posterior part of the oviduct that joins the uterus jo uterus might join the in aparam kandile here this is a oviducal funnel then this is the what is called this portion this is the yeah isthmus okay this is the ampulla this is these are the fimbri okay so this wider funnel shaped part there is the infundibulum or the oviducal funnel it has fimbri then it leads to the next part called the ampulla then this is the last part the narrower part the posterior part it connects with the uterus and it is called the isthmus okay you all got it okay so there are three parts of the uh, for the oviduct and you know that oviduct has an important role what is the functions of the oviduct the function of oviduct is fertilization fertilization takes place in the oviduct actually it takes place in the ampulla isthmus region uh, somewhat somewhere here okay the fertilization takes place in the ampulla isthmus region in between uh, ampulla we say it's in ampulla or it is actually in between uh, ampulla and isthmus in this junction there the what is called the fertilization uh, happens okay so that's about the structure of the oviduct now comes to the uterus the uterus is highly muscular and pear shaped structure pear shape and which under means like it is a pear shaped structure see alagil he here sabar jelly le sabar jelly a sabar jelly ude shape aanu naanu parayunnu pear shape so it is highly muscular see very thick muscle highly muscular region muscular part it is pear shape okay so the uterus it is highly muscular and pear shaped structure it is attached by the ligaments to the pelvic wall you know that it is attached by pelvic uh, attached to the pelvic wall by ligaments the uterine wall has three layers the inner glandular layer called endometrium middle thick layer of smooth muscles called myometrium and an external thin membrane perimetrium okay we'll see that he here this is highly muscular the uterus it is pear shape it is highly muscular and it has three layers it has an inner the innermost glandular layer it is called the endometrium and in between there is a th thick part that is formed of smooth muscles okay smooth muscles and it is called myometrium and there is an outer layer okay the outer covering and it is called perimetrium you got it the uterus it is a highly muscular organ that is present in the pelvic cavity attached to the pelvic wall by ligaments and it is pear shape and then other sabar jelly shape it is very highly muscular muscles are there and there is a three layer ullilulla layer nu parayna peru endometrium ennaanu adu highly glandular aanu grandi uterine glands akke avade undu secretions akke uterine secretions akke avade nanu undagunnathu pinneedullathu valare chiri valare thick aayittulla katti koodiya myometrium aanu smooth muscles kondaanu undaki irikkunathu okay and porame ullathu endaanu adu perimetrium oru thin layer aanu okay so you know that this is glandular and the embryo gets implanted onto this endometrium okay the embryo after fertilization when the lady gets conceived okay what happens the embryo gets implanted 
എംബ്രിയോ ഈ എൻഡോമെട്രിയത്തിലാണ് അവിടെ ആണ് വന്ന് പറ്റിപ്പിടിച്ച് വളരുന്നത് ഓക്കെ എംബ്രിയോ വളരുന്നത് ഭ്രൂണം വളരുന്നത് എൻഡോമെട്രിയത്തിലാണ് പറ്റിപ്പിടിച്ച് വളരുന്നത് ഓക്കെ ആൻഡ് ഇറ്റ് ആൾസോ അണ്ടർ ഗോസ് സൈക്കിൾ ചേഞ്ചസ് ഡ്യൂറിംഗ് മെൻസ്ട്രൽ സൈക്കിൾ ഓക്കെ ആർത്തവ സമയത്ത് ഉണ്ടാകുന്ന സൈ സ്ത്രീകളിലുണ്ടാകുന്ന ഫെർട്ടിലിറ്റി പീരീഡിലുള്ള സ്ത്രീകളിൽ ഉണ്ടാകുന്ന മാസമുറ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ആർത്തവം ആ ആർത്തവ ചക്രത്തിൻ്റെ ഇതായിട്ടുള്ള മാറ്റങ്ങൾ ഉണ്ടാകുന്ന യൂട്രസിൽ എൻഡോമെട്രിയത്തിലാണ് ഓക്കെ ഇറ്റ് ആൾസോ അണ്ടർ ഗോസ് ദ സൈക്ലിക്കൽ ചേഞ്ചസ് ഡ്യൂറിംഗ് ദ മെൻസൽ സൈക്കിൾ ഓർ ദ പീരീഡ് ഓക്കെ സോ ദ എംബ്രിയോ ഈസ് ഇംപ്ലാന്റഡ് ഇൻ ദ എൻഡോമെട്രിയം and also it undergoes the cyclical changes during the menstrual cycle now the myometrium helps in the childbirth by its strong contraction we have already mentioned that this myometrium is formed of thick muscle it is formed of smooth muscles and this smooth muscles during the time of childbirth it contracts vigorously adu valare vigorous aayi contract cheyidukonde childbirth undu ivudu rendu vasathil nam ഇങ്ങനെ കൺട്രാക്ഷൻ വന്നിട്ട് ഇവിടെയുള്ള കുഞ്ഞിനെ പുഷ് ചെയ്ത് താപ്പോട്ട് മനസ്സിലായി ഡെലിവറിക്ക് സഹായിക്കും അതാണ് ഈ മയോമെട്രിയത്തിൻ്റെ ഫങ്ഷൻ ഓക്കെ ത്രൂ ബൈ ഇറ്റ്സ് സ്ട്രോങ് കോൺട്രാക്ഷൻ ഓക്കെ സോ യു നോ ദാറ്റ് ദ യൂട്രോസ് ഈസ് ഫോം ഓഫ് ത്രീ ലെയേഴ്സ് ഇൻ അവർ എൻഡോമെട്രിയം ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ഗ്ലാൻഡുലർ ആൻഡ് ഇറ്റ് ഹോൾസ് ഓർ ദ എംബ്രിയോ ഈസ് അറ്റാച്ച് ഇംപ്ലാന്റഡ് ഓൺ ടു ദിസ് എൻഡോമെട്രിയം and also the cyclic changes during the menstrual cycle occurs uh, from here okay it undergoes the changes and myometrium it is thicker the middle part it is formed of smooth muscles and the smooth muscles contracts vigorously during the time of childbirth or parturition okay childbirth samayathu ee muscle inde vigorous aayittulla contraction kondana childbirth possible aagunu okay that's about then perimetrium it is just an outer layer covering outer covering okay that's about uterus now going to the next part the cervix vagina and external genitalia the narrow lower part of the uterus that opens to the vagina is called uh, cervix the narrow uh, lower part of the uterus that opens to the vagina you can see the uh, previous picture here see the na- narrow lower part of the uterus this portion it is called the cervix the, the cervix it has a mouth here the cervical mouth cervical orifice okay this opening and it of op- cervix opens into the vaginal tube you got it this is the narrow part lower part of the uterus it is called cervix and it opens in, into the vaginal tube that's about cervix then mons pubis a cushion of fatty tissue covered by skin and hair it acts as a protective pad during intercourse it also has sebaceous glands that release oily secretions or pheromones that are involved in sexual attraction it is a cushion of fatty tissue covered by skin and hair this up here in the first picture we can see see here this portion okay this portion the uterus is inside not the inside portion i am telling the outside the, the skinny portion of your uh, of the body of the the skinny portion of the body of the female okay outside outer uh, outer side here it is a uh, tissue it is it's a pad like tissue it is covered by skin and hair okay that it's a pad of fatty tissue and its function is to protect the internal uh, reproductive organs okay id ee portion aanu ee purameyulla sharirathin purameyulla a female reproductive system athinte aa bhag genital area il puramey kaanuna oru pad of tissue aanu ee bones pubis annu parayunnathu idu skin ya skin kondu cover cheyirikkana ivide hair okke undu okay our portion other endan function it acts as a pad it acts as a cushion okay a pad or a cushion uh, during sexual intercourse sexual intercourse nadakkuna samayathu agathulla internal reproductive organs nonnum 
സ്ട്രെസ് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ അതിന് ഷേക്ക് ഒന്നും ഉണ്ടാകാതെ സ്ട്രെസ് ഉണ്ടാകാതിരിക്കാൻ വേണ്ടി ഒരു പാഡായിട്ട് പ്രൊട്ടക്റ്റ് ചെയ്യുന്ന ഈ ഭാഗത്തിനെയാണ് പുറമേയുള്ള ആ ഭാഗത്തിനെയാണ് മോൺസ് പിബിസ് എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ഇവിടെ ചില ഗ്ലാൻസ് ഒക്കെ ഉണ്ട് സെബേഷ്യസ് ഗ്ലാൻസ് സ്കിന്നിലുള്ളത് പോലെ തന്നെ ദാറ്റ് പ്രൊഡ്യൂസർ വൈൽഡ് മെറ്റീരിയൽ സെക്രീഷൻസ് കാൾ സെബം ദാറ്റ് ആക്സ് ആസ് ഫെറമോൺസ് ഓക്കെ സോ ദിസ് ദ സെക്രീഷൻ ഫ്രം ഹിയർ ആക്സ് ആസ് ഫെറമോൺസ് ടു അട്രാക്ട് ദ മെയിൽ അട്രാക്ട് ദി ഓപ്പോസിറ്റ് സെക്സ് ഓക്കെ ദാറ്റ്സ് വാട്ട് ഈസ് കാൾ പിബിസ് മോൺസ് പിബിസ് ഓക്കെ ഹിയർ so mons pubis it is a musc it's a cushion of fatty tissue covered by skin and hair it acts as a protective pad during intercourse it also has sebaceous glands that release oily secretions or pheromones that are involved in sexual attraction but i am saying that at the beginning i saw that that pore is a fatty tissue kind of a cushion and the cushion pad will be covered by skin and hair അത് ഇറ്റ് ആക്സ് ആസ് എ പ്രൊട്ടക്റ്റീവ് പാഡ് ഡ്യൂറിംഗ് ഇന്റർകോഴ്സ് ഇന്റർകോഴ്സ് സമയത്ത് ഉള്ളിലുള്ള സെക്സ് ഓർഗൻസിന് പ്രശ്നമൊന്നും വരാതെ സംരക്ഷിക്കുന്ന ഒരു പാഡാണത് ഇറ്റ് ആൾസോ ഹാസ് സെബേഷ്യസ് ഗ്ലാൻസ് സെബേഷ്യസ് ഗ്ലാൻസ് അവിടെ ഉണ്ട് സ്കിന്നിൽ ഉണ്ടല്ലോ എല്ലാ സ്കിന്നിൽ സെബേഷ്യസ് ഗ്ലാൻസ് ഉണ്ട് മാമൽസിന്റെ ആ സെബേഷ്യസ് ഗ്ലാൻസ് ഉൽപ്പാദിപ്പിക്കുന്ന സെബേഷ് ഓയിലി സെക്രീഷനാണ് സെബം എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ഇവിടെ അത് ഫെറമോണായിട്ട് ആക്ട് ചെയ്യും ചില ചേഞ്ചുകളിലൂടെ ദാറ്റ് ആർ ഇൻവോൾഡ് ഇൻ സെക്ഷൽ അട്രാക്ഷൻ ടു അട്രാക്ട്സ് ദ മെയിൽ ഓക്കെ it produces pheromones for uh, sexual attraction you got it now comes labia majora labia minora so these are the extensions of the mons that surrounds the vaginal opening here see look at here here there is a diagram so here you can see here, here will be the mons pubis a uh, mons pubis in the extension run or flap aayittu ivide skin aayittu poramayulla നമ്മുടെ ഫീമെയിൽ ജെനിറ്റേലിയയുടെ ഈ പോർഷനെ വൾവ എന്നാണ് പറയുന്നത് ദിസ് കാൾ ജനറലി കാൾ വൾവ ആൻഡ് ദിസ് വൾവ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ഔട്ടർ മോസ്റ്റ് പാർട്ട് ഓഫ് ദ വൾവ ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ഫോംഡ് ഓഫ് ആൻ എക്സ്റ്റൻഷൻ ഓഫ് ദ മോൺസ് പിബിസ് ഓക്കെ ആൻഡ് ദാറ്റ് ഔട്ടർ ലെയർ ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് കാൾ ദ ലേബിയ മെജോറ ഓക്കെ ദിസ് ഈസ് വാട്ട് ഈസ് കാൾ ലേബിയ മെജോറ ഇന്നെ ടു ദാറ്റ് ലേബിയ മെജോറ ദർ ഈസ് അനദർ ഫോൾഡ് ഓക്കെ അനദർ ഫോൾഡ് ഓഫ് ടിഷ്യൂ അപ്പോൾ പുറമേയുള്ള ഇതിനെ ദിസ് ഈസ് ആൾസോ കാൾ അപ്പർ ലിപ്പ് ആൻഡ് ദിസ് ഈസ് കാൾ ലോവർ ലിപ്പ് ഓക്കെ ലേബിയ മെജോറ ഈസ് കാൾ അപ്പർ ലിപ്പ് ആൻഡ് ലേബിയ മൈനോറ ഈസ് കാൾ ലോവർ ലിപ്പ് ദിസ് പോർഷൻ ഈസ് ദി എക്സ്റ്റേണൽ ജെനറ്റേലി ഓഫ് ദ ഫീമെയിൽ ആൻഡ് ഹിയർ ഈസ് ദ മോൺസ് പിബിസ് ഐ വിൽ ഗോ ബാക്ക് ഹിയർ ദിസ് ഈസ് ദ മോൺസ് പിബിസ് ആൻഡ് ദ this portion of the mons pubis extends down as the labia majora okay this extends as the labia majora and in that to that there is another fold of tissue which is called labia minora or minor lip okay major lip or upper lip and inner lip okay labia minora or lower lip okay uh, then inside so these two are the protective coverings we can say and inside you can here here you can see at the junction at the uh, anterior part of the junction of the two sides of the labia minora here at that junction there is an extensor there is an erectile tissue there is an erectile tissue it is called uh this is called clitoris okay this erectile tissue is called clitoris so this clitoris it is homologous to the uh, human uh, p- uh, the male penis okay it is erectile too and then comes to that in this area here there is an opening this is called the urethral orifice where the urethra opens okay and below that there here there is an opening it is the opening of the vagina it is a vaginal orifice this is a vaginal orifice okay the vaginal opening and here you can see uh, two p sized glands these are called bartholin's glands these are bartholin's glands these are homologous to the bulbourethral glands in male okay this bartholin's glands are homologous to the a uh, bulbourethral glands in male what is the function of the bulbourethral gland 
Yes, it it secretes uh, it secretions acts as lubricant lubricants. Okay, it helps in the lubrication of the vaginal uh, tract. Like that, the bulb the Bartholin's gland in female, it also secretes a, a mucus like secretion. It also helps in the lubrication of the vaginal tube. Okay, so this is seen on the uh, posterior part of the vagina, and here. On the anterior part of the vaginal orifice, on the posterior part of the urethral orifice, there is a pair of glands, and these glands are called skin's glands. Skin's glands, and these skin's glands, their secretion, uh, it has antimicrobial activity, antimicrobial effect, and it helps to prevent any. Uh, any urinary tract infections, UTIs, it prevents, okay, the skin's glands uh, produce certain secretions that is also, that also acts as lubricant and also it has certain antimicrobial uh, property that prevents uh, UTI, urinary tract infections here in the urethral uh, tube, okay, it prevents a uh, uh, UTI. So, you know, Mons pubis, you know, labia majora, these are the extensions of the mons that surrounds the vaginal opening, labia minora or the minor lip. It is paired for the tissue seen in it to the labia majora, labia majora, labia minora. Okay. Now hymen. This part, this is a vaginal. The vaginal opening is covered partially by a membrane called hymen or virgin knot. It is also called virgin knot. See here, this vaginal orifice. In young females, it is covered by, it is partially covered by a membrane, a very thin membrane, and this membrane is called hymen or virgin knot. Okay, that can be lost in uh, females uh, nowadays due to uh, various activities they do by uh, just like sporting, cycling, etc. This hymen can be uh, broken. It, it may not, it can be absent from uh, a female, but in the case of normal case in a young female, uh, th those who are not doing any uh, physical strenuous work like cycling, sporting, or some other work, works like that, this hymen or the virgin knot can be absent. Okay, so that's about the hymen or the virgin knot. It was called commonly called virgin knot uh, because of certain superstitions or taboos uh, which were believed by certain societies before. Okay, then uh, the next one uh, that is the clitoris. The clitoris, it is a tiny muscular structure that is seen at the upper junction of the two labia minora. I have shown you here the upper junction of the labia minora. There is an erectile tissue, it is called clitoris. Okay, this clitoris, it is homologous to the glans penis, the penis of uh, human male. Okay, it is erectile too. This structure in female is erectile, just like the uh, male penis. Okay, and it lies above the urethral opening. It is highly sensitive and erectile. This clitoris, it is highly sensitive and erectile. Then, Bartholin's glands. I have mentioned these are a pair of pea-sized glands located on both sides of the posterior part of the vaginal opening. Its secretion lubricates the vagina. It is homologous to bulbo urethral glands in male. This one, okay, the Bartholin glands. P shaped structure seen posterior to the vaginal orifice. Secretion lubricates the vagina and it is homologous to the bulbo urethral glands in male. Okay, that's it. Then I have also mentioned the skin's gland the skin's gland. This is seen here, posterior to the urethral orifice and its secretion also lubricates. Also, it has antimicrobial property that helps preventing any urinary tract infections. Okay, so these are the different parts of the female reproductive system. I will explain once more. See here, the female reproductive system consists of a pair of ovaries, a pair of oviducts, a muscular uterus, a cervix, vagina and external genitalia. 
this ovaries are seen on either side of the uh, the uterus in the pelvic cavity is suspended by ligaments then we have seen that each ovary uh, the length of the ovary we have mentioned there is an epithelium when we take a section inside the stroma then there is cortex and medulla okay the details about the ovary uh, we will uh, deal with when we learn about the menstrual cycle okay the reproductive events when we learn we will learn uh, much about that later okay then uh, we have seen that uh, the oviduct oviduct it is a part where fertilization occurs it has three parts infundibulum ampulla and isthmus ampulla is the uh, infundibulum is the wider part okay and its rim has finger-like structures called fimbria then the middle part ampulla the uh, the last part is the isthmus then we have seen uh, the uterus or womb highly muscular pear-shaped structure it has three uh, layers the endometrium which is glandular and the uh, what is called the implantation happens there then the middle part it is a myometrium it is highly muscular and uh, it is formed of smooth muscles helps in the contraction of the muscles that helps in childbirth then outside the outer layer it is a perimetrium okay then we have seen the there is a cervix the narrow lower part of the uterus that opens the vagina then mons pubis we have seen that it's a uh, pad of tissue that is seen here on the outside okay it is covered by skin and hair this portion it, it acts as a pad that protective pad helps uh, protecting the internal sex organs okay reproductive organs during coitus or intercourse then we have seen that uh, after that we have seen there is labia majora the mons pubis extends downwards to the uh, external genitalia say uh, fold of skin it is called labia majora inner to that labia my inner to the labia majora there is labia minora these two folds protects the uh, genitalia especially the vaginal openings okay here we can see the labia majora inside labia minora then inside there is urethral opening the vaginal opening the bartholin's glands then the skin's gland here comes the uh, clitoris okay it is also called it is clitoris uh, sometimes it is pronounced as the clitoris okay actually its pronunciation is uh, clitoris then hymen the vaginal opening is partially covered by a membrane called hymen okay then uh, clitoris it's a tiny muscular structure that is seen at the junction of the uh, labia minora at the upper junction and it is highly sensitive and erectile then Bartholin's glands two precise glands located near to the vaginal opening its secretion lubricates the vagina and it is homologous to bulbo urethral glands in males. I hope you have understood this lesson on female reproductive system. Okay, go through the video, go through the notes, okay, and learn it. Thank you, and you all have a great day.